So what is immuno-oncology? Uh, it's in a nutshell is harnessing the immune system to treat cancer. So easier said than done. We first need to understand what is the immune system response to cancer and why doesn't it respond always? Starting from the middle top in orange, you have the tumor growing in any particular site of the body. The dendritic cells are the first ones that will encounter the tumor. They will actually phagocytize it and then they will be able to present the specific tumor antigen. So these are the neoantigens. The tumors mutate and they present an antigen that is not normally present in healthy tissue. These dendritic cells travel through the lymphoid vessels and in the lymphoid nodes they present this tumor antigen with appropriate co-stimulatory signals to the T cell that then gets very specific, it specializes itself to identify this particular antigen from the tumor, it proliferates and it actually will become activated and migrates. It migrates through the lymphoid system until it finds the tumor and there is where the T cell is going to be killing the tumor. Uh, if you want more specific information on how this whole process works, I do have other videos in YouTube. In uh, this paper, the interesting thing is they actually looked at 124 published articles. So what I'm showing you is on the y-axis is the percent of articles that are published and in the bars, the light blue is when the effect on the prognosis of the patient was good. In purple is when there was no uh, effect. And in orange, poor prognosis. And then we have five different categories. What these papers actually showed was that it's unmistakably good response when patients were uh, identified as having a profile on their T-cells that's either CD8 positive, CD45 row positive cells, or they also were identified as Th1 cell. So these two phenotypic descriptions of their T-cells was uh, clearly uh, an association in more than 90% of the papers with good prognosis. What we see in the next categories is not as straightforward. The Th2 cell profile is more likely to be associated with poor prognosis. However, it doesn't always associate with it. But in 50% of the papers, Th2 was identified as poor prognosis, whereas 25% of the papers, Th2 was identified as having good prognosis. The other 25% of the papers, none. So, give or take, Th2 may actually not be very good for cancer patients. Uh, the story with the Th17 and the T regulatory cell profile is a bit more of a flip of a coin. So, what are exactly these T cell phenotypes and why uh, can we actually make uh, any sense of what we're seeing with this publication? In another YouTube video, I actually have explained a little bit more in detail this uh, phenotype of the TH cells. But basically, we have now, basically there's uh, four or five phenotypes identified. Very clearly, the TH1 phenotype is the one that is associated with TNF, tumor necrosis factor. We shouldn't be surprised that TNF uh, is going to be present in that phenotype that is associated with basically good prognosis, which is the Th1. The Th1 profile also is associated with the uh, interleukin-2 secretion and interferon gamma. And this is uh, very associated with inflammatory responses, killer responses that will pr produce inflammation. The TH2 response, on the other hand, is basically more uh, associated with the vasoactive response in allergy. 
and it's driven by a completely different set of cytokines. If you can see there, it's basically the interleukin 4, 5, 13, and 25. And this is the one from the graph that I showed you before is more associated with a poor prognosis. Now the TH17 profile is a profile that is driven by many different cytokines in the milieu and it's characterized by the IL-17 and IL-21 production. There's also TNF-alpha produced. So the TH17, as I mentioned to you, same as the T regulatory profile, were less clear, probably more of a flip of a coin. In the T regulatory cells, which actually dampen the immune response from the other TH phenotypes, what happens is you have tumor necrosis factor, interleukin-2, interleukin-6, interleukin-27, producing this particular T regulatory cell. So it's sort of a flip of a coin. If you happened to have a response for good prognosis, a typical TH1, then having the regulatory cells dampen the TH1 may not be very good. On the other hand, if you had a TH2 response, that is more associated with poor prognosis, and now you dampen that response with the T regulatory cells, it might actually end in good prognosis. These uh, cytokines also is very interesting that they have some sort of different mechanism for regulation. So first thing is you see that one of the products of the TH1 differentiation is interferon gamma, which is also one of the stimulants for the differentiation into TH1. So there's a little bit of a feedback loop there where inflammatory response TH1 will augment itself as it is producing the same cytokine that stimulates and activates the TH1. Now, on the other hand, the interferon gamma inhibits the differentiation into TH17. Interleukin-2 inhibits the B-cell isotype switch in the allergic responses. On the other hand, the TH2 also produces IL-4, which is one of the factors that stimulates TH2. So it's again another feedback loop of augmenting its own production. But interleukin-4 inhibits the differentiation into TH1. So what we can see here is that basically this TH1 or TH2 would be very predominant in one individual, individual, either one or the other. So the characterization of which one is the profile in a patient with cancer is very useful because we're seeing now that one of these profiles, TH1, has associated with bad prognosis and it actually happens to inhibit the TH2, which is associated with poor prognosis and inhibits the TH1. The TH17 also produces its own cytokine IL-21 that further stimulates, stimulates it. And it does have inhibitory uh, effects on the differentiation of TH1. Um, and also inhibits the NK cells. So in the TH1, it's difficult to say exactly. It's like I said, a flip of a coin. And as I mentioned before, the T regulatory cells can actually occur after any one of these pathways is activated and it will dampen any one of these. So depending on what the patient is having, if the T regulatory cell is the predominant one, it will dampen the results that could include the production of tumor necrosis factor, which as we saw from Dr. Coley's toxin is actually helpful for patients. So going back to this graph, we can now have a better understanding of what this means. Furthermore, what I wanted to introduce also to you is the paper in immunology uh, that shows, um, the paper I quote in their immunology in 1994, CD8 positive, CD45 rho positive cells produce interleukin-2, interferon gamma, and TNF. This is the profile of the TH1 cells. And the main result is TNF. So tumor necrosis factor in the cells that are either characterized as TH1s or characterized as CD8 positive, CD45 rho positive cells. Either way, it's the interferon gamma, interleukin-2, and 
most importantly, TNF, tumor necrosis factor profile. They will have better prognosis. So what is happening with the TH2s? You're more likely, if you have a TH2 response, you're more likely to have a poor response rather than a good response to the cancer. The TH2 phenotype is characterized, as I mentioned before, by the production of interleukin-4 and interleukin-13. These are cytokines that will produce EGEF stimulation, VGEF. Basically, they're very angiogenic. So they promote not only tumor growth, but also metastasis of the tumor. And on the right bottom corner of the slide, remember that the Th2 inhibit the Th1 profile, which is the one that will produce the tumor necrosis factor. So Th2 phenotype, when, when patients are unfortunate enough to develop the Th2 phenotype and they have cancer, more likelihood of having poor prognosis is also associated with uh, favoring the angiogenesis that allows the tumor to grow, to metastasize, but also indirectly by inhibiting the own patient's Th1 response that will produce a tumor necrosis factor. So uh, it is very important to understand the different responses of the immune system to cancer and how can we harness it for immuno-oncology. I hope this short summary was useful and you can see the longer version of the immuno-oncology presentation in my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.